we're moving on to volume 14-5, volume of prisms. We only will deal with volumes of prisms in sixth grade. And volume is how much you can put inside. Surface area is the area of the outside. This is different. This is how much can you put inside of the figure or the rectangular prism. We're not adding the surface area. You, you definitely want to know the difference between surface area and volume. So what is volume? The volume of a prism is the number of unit cubes or cubic units needed to fill the prism. Common units for volume are cubic inches, cubic feet, and cubic meters. Now you need cube because you have to multiply length times width times height. That's how you end up with feet cube and meters cube and inches cube, whatever length to the third power. You can find the volume of this prism by finding out how many unit cubes will fit in it. So four times two times one, that's easy. The number of unit cubes that fill the prism is four times two times one, which equals eight. So the volume is eight cubic units. When side lengths are fractions, unit cubes may not fit. Try a smaller cube. The least common denominator of the side lengths is three. So pack the prism with smaller cubes of one third by one third by one third. And the area, the volume. The number of smaller cubes that fill the prism is, is four. Times two. Times one. which equals eight. Since the volume is the number of unit cubes that fill the prism, find the number of smaller cubes that fit in a one by one by one unit cube. Twenty-seven smaller cubes fill a unit cube. That's just the area, the so each volume. So of the smaller cubes is one twenty-seventh of a unit cube. That's the volume of the small cube. Look at the original prism again. Eight of the smaller cubes fit in the prism. Each smaller cube is one twenty-seventh of a unit cube. So the volume of the prism is eight times one twenty-seventh, which equals eight twenty-seven cubic units. Now, there are much easier ways to do this. You will have to know always. So if you look here, the cube that we've packed inside of this cube has an edge length of one third. So the volume of the small cube, we know volume is equivalent to length times width times height. So one third times one third times one third. Remember, cubes have edges that are exactly the same. So one third times one third is one ninth, and then multiply that by one third. This is where one over 27 came from. So the volume of the small cube that you pack inside of this right here, right here, right here, right here, has a volume of one over 27. And since we took each one of these and found how many one third edge length cubes do we have in the, for the length? How many do we have for the, the width? And how many do we have for the height? All you have to do is take four over three divided by one third. We can't have division next to division, so we need to multiply by the reciprocal. And we end up with four. So there are four one third edge length cubes for the length. And then we need to do the same thing for the width. So how many one inch, one, one third cubes, one third, cube edge length cubes are for the length or the width we call this the length this will be the width that'll be the height 
So you'll do the same exact thing. So you have to, how many one thirds are in this two third right here? That's division, right? How many one thirds are in the two thirds on the side? We can't have division next to division, so we have two thirds. We have to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor, and we'll end up with two, one, two. And then we have to do the same thing for the height, which is one third divided by one third, anything divided by itself equals one. So we have one cube for the height, two cubes for the width, and four cubes for the, for the length. So we have a total of four times two times one. We have a total of eight cubes, four times two times eight. We have a total of eight one-third edge length cubes. So what does that mean? What is the volume? If each edge length cube has a volume of one over 27, which is this right here, and you have eight of them, eight of this cube, you multiply the volume of one cube. This is where this part comes from. The volume of one cube is one over 27 times the total number of cubes, which is eight. You have eight one third volume cubes. I just found that out by using my edge length for the length, the width, and the height individually. And then you multiply, well, you will get, you multiply across and you end up with eight over 27. So the volume of this figure is eight over 27. Now this is one way to do it, more complex than the other way, just finding the volume. Um, so you can just find the volume, volume equals length times width times height. However, we're not focusing on this method. We want to pack it with unit cubes and use that method. All methods are important. So 4 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 1 over 3. 4 times 2 times 1 is 8 for the numerator. And then we have 3 times 3 times 3 for the denominator, which is 27. So notice we get the same answer. Obviously, this one is easier, but you have to know how to use unit cubes. Trust me, I know how that could be. All right, so moving on to the next one. Use cubes with fractional edge lengths to find the volume of the rectangular prism. So we want to use a fractional edge length to find the volume of the rectangular prism. So let's go ahead and work this out. And we're not going to use that. So the first thing we want to do is figure out what, which edge length are we going to use. So let's work it out. So we want to take the edge length of the length. So first off, one half, one half, and one half. So I'm going to use a cube that can fit inside of this that has an edge length of one half. So how many one half edge length cubes can I fit into this box? So I'm going to figure out how many cubes can I put across the length? How many cubes can I put across the width? How many cubes can I put across the height? So I'm going to take the edge length one half and I'm going to figure that out. So for my length, my width, and my height, my length, I'm going to use three and one half. My height, I'm going to, I'm, well, for my width, I'm going to use two and one half. And for my height, I'm going to use one and one half. And then I have to divide it by my edge length, which is one half. And this is going to tell me the number of cubes I can pack along the length, I can pack along the width, I can pack along the height. So I'm going to do, so this one is equivalent to, I have to change three and one half to an improper fraction. Two times three is six plus one is seven over two. And then I have to divide that by one half. Anything to, uh, dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply and I end up with seven. So this is equivalent to seven. So what does that mean? That means I can pack seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one half edge length cubes into this box. Now remember you have to go all the way up and you have to fill the whole box. But we're just taking it step by step. Now I have two and one half and I need to see how many one half edge length cubes can I pack along the width, which is right here. 
So I'm going to divide it by how many one halves are in this two and one half. So I'm going to change this into an improper fraction. So this is five over two. Two times two is four plus one is five. Denominator stays the same. And I'm going to divide that by one over two. Dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Five times two is 10. 10 times one is two. 10 divided by two is five. Now, you know, I like to just cross simplify and I would have just got five over one, which is five. So we can pack five. So we can pack one, two, three, four, five, one half edge length cubes along the width. Now we need to do the height. So I have, I need to see how many one half inch cubes can I pack along this height? So I have one and one half divided by one half. How many one halves are in one and one half? Change this mixed number into an improper fraction. Three over two divided by one half. Dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I'm gonna multiply across three times two is six. Two times one is two. Six divided by two is three. So that means I can pack three. I'm gonna change the color again three edge lift cubes along this height. So now I need to multiply seven times five times three to get the number of cubes that I can pack inside of this box. The number of one half edge length cubes I can pack inside this box. So I have seven times five, which is 35 times three. It's going to be 105. So I can pack 105 one, one half edge length cubes in this box with these with these dimensions here. But now I need to figure out, okay, if I can put 105 one half edge length cubes into this box, how do I figure out the volume? Well, first I have to find the volume of the small cube. So I know volume is equivalent to length times width times height. So that means that I need to multiply one half times one half times one half. One half times one half is one fourth. And one fourth times one half is one eighth. So the volume of the small cube is equivalent to one eighth. And I'm gonna make some room. So the volume of the small cube is equivalent to one eighth. Now, if the volume of the small cube is equivalent to one eighth, and I have 105 of them, I can find the volume of the, of the rectangular prism by saying, okay, the volume is one eighth of the small, of the edge length cube. And if I have 105 of them, 105 of the one eighth volume cubes, I can get the volume of the prism, which is 105 over eight, and then you have to divide 105 divided by 8 is going to be 13 and 1 8 feet cubed. Standard long division, drop the top number. In. 8 goes into 10 one time. You have 2 left over. Bring down the 5. 8 goes into 25 three times. And then you have one left over, 25 minus 24, you have one left over. The remainder becomes the numerator, the divisor is the denominator. So this is where I got this from right here. So that means the volume of the rectangular prism is 13 and 1 8 feet cubed because length times width times height is three dimensional. Feet times feet times feet is feet cubed. So that's where the feet cubed came from. An easy way to do that was just multiply the length times width times height. There are other ways to do it. That's just one way. What is the volume of the rectangular prism? Now, they didn't tell you to use edge length cubes here. But if you want to use edge length cubes, the edge length cube that you should probably use should be one fifth. So you want to see how many one fifth edge length cubes can fit in here. So the volume of the one, the one fifth edge length cubes that'll be equivalent to one. So the volume of the edge length cubes that you will pack into here 
will be five. But you have to figure, okay, how many edge length cubes can I fit for the height? How many for the length? How many for the width? We know dividing by numbers is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you will divide this four over five divided by one fifth. How many one fifths can fit into the four four fifths? Obviously four. How many one fifths are in four fifths? So this is a whole right here. And we have one, two, three, four, five. This part right here is represented by four fifths. How many four fifths? So this is one fifth. One fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one, two, three, four, five, one fifth, minus this one. So these four, you can fit four of them. Then you do the same thing here. Three fifth divided by one fifth. You end up with three fifth times five over one, which is equivalent to three. And then here you have two fifth divided by one fifth. 2 fifth times 5 over 1, which is equivalent to 2. So you can fit 2 times 3 times 8 1 fifth edge length cubes into this box. So 48 total cubes. And since you can fit 48 total cubes in the volume of 1 cube is 1 over 25, you can multiply the volume of 1 cube by the total number of cubes to get the volume of the larger picture. So 48 over 125, and that would be your volume. All right. Move into key concepts. So we already know we can use the length times the width times the height. You can stop it, read it, and go from there. That's in your notes notebook. So we wanna use two different methods for this. So this one, you want to get a common denominator or you want to figure out what edge length cubes do you want to put here. So this is six, this is six, and this is three. So you will probably want to use one six edge length cubes. So you divide that by one six, divide this by one six, divide this by one six to see what are the lengths, how many edge length cubes one six can you fit for the length, the width, and height. Figure out the number, then multiply to figure out the number of cubes. And then find the volume of the small cube to get. And then you can use the volume of the small cube multiplied by the number of cubes to get the volume of the large cube. So that is, and then the other way would be using the formula volume equals length times width times height. So putting these numbers in and just simply getting the volume. So both of them, you get the same answer. All right, so go ahead and do this one in your digits book. Try to use both methods and then go from there. All right, moving on to the last part. This one is pretty easy. container has the shape of a rectangular prism. Use a formula to find the volume of the cargo container to the nearest cubic foot. So you just have to multiply length times width times height, change all the mixed numbers to improper fractions, and then multiply across. You can use either one of these formulas, but you will get the same answer. So the base is just the length and the width, the length and the width of the base. And then you have the height. So either way, you get the same answer. And then you have to round to the nearest whole number because that's what it said to do in the question. Only round if the question says to do so. And then you're gonna use the same method to answer the last one in your digits book. And that's it.